it's men and women, and there are a lot of unisex problems associated with it, like bargaining, you know, it's real ordeal, bargaining with the same. And you'd think it'd get easier the longer you're here and the more Vietnamese you speak, but no, new problems arise. I've been here for a while, I can speak okay. I can get by, I can get my idea across, but there are a lot of people, not only Sayoms, a lot of Vietnamese people, that find it quite shocking that a foreigner is speaking Vietnamese, and in some cases cannot comprehend that it is, in fact, a foreigner <laughs> speaking Vietnamese. Yes, this is a true story. The other day I was walking down the street, had my big backpack on, saw a Sayom, and I said, uh, in Vietnamese, I said, uh, listen, I've got to get to the train station, not the big one, but the little one in behind, because I'm going to Sapa. I need to get there in about 10 minutes, because the train leaves in 20 minutes. How much is that going to cost? Kind of looks down and... <laughs> it's like, buddy, I just said, I had to go to the train station. Not the big train station, but the little train station. I'm going to train to Sapa. It's leaving 20 minutes. Got to get there in 10 minutes. How much will it cost? You think I'd understand? Moving in. Might have picked up that little pine cone on the linguistic trail of fun. Might have had that one in the bucket. But no, no, no. Just that kind of stare. Oh, it's pain. Oh, it's pain. And you know what? Sometimes there's pain that happens, not because they don't understand what you said, but because they did understand what you said, and it causes such a kerfuffle, you can't get anything done in the first place. Now you go to the full restaurant, little plastic chairs, walking in, la da 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 pull up your little plastic chair. Chi oi, mot bat pho. Zai! 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 Lam, zai! Lam! Lam! Go on, get over here! Get over here! Do it again! Do it again! That thing you just did! Do it again! Do it again! Oh! Um... Chi si, oi! Mot, mot, mot bat pho. Zai! You live in Nam! So live in... Oh! My daughter! Get my daughter! Marry my daughter! Marry my daughter! The girl's gonna be like, oh, Marry her now! She's like 12. Can you imagine the reverse? Can you imagine like a Starbucks in Seattle, a couple of pimply white kids behind the counter, young girl of Asian extraction walks up, has a look behind the glass, and says to the guys, um, yes, I'd like a uh, brown muffin and a caramel macchiato. Oh, that was so clear. I understood like everything. Jack, Tim, get over here. Do it again. Do it again. A brand muffin and a caramel macchiato. Ha oh, ha! Just like an American! High five! High five! No, it wouldn't happen. But most of this is coming from is coming from me having been here a while, and I sort of expect to be treated like they would treat anybody else, which isn't realistic. You know what I mean? Once you're here for a while, you start to lose the, the perception of yourself as someone from somewhere else, and the society is different from our society. It doesn't really happen, so you tend to get confused and jaded and all muddled up. And basically, you go a little funny when you've been here for a while, and I'd like to just end my little set before we move on with a little list, and I'll pick it up now. Yes. This is the signs that you have been in Vietnam a little too long. Anybody here long timers, by the way? Anybody here over a year? Anybody? Yeah, yeah, a couple of hands. Anybody here over two years, three years, four years? Some long timers here? All right, okay, this one's for you. The rest of you go home. All right. You know you've been in Vietnam too long when you start reading the license plates of motorbikes and know exactly which province they correspond to. Oh, 24, that's Hai Phong. 16, that's Sun La. 12, that's Hai Zung. Boom, 3 out of 3. Uh. I know them all. Let me know. You know you've been in Vietnam too long when you have a Yahoo Messenger nick which you use to pick up girls. <laughs> If you want to pick up girls in Vietnam, you got to get on the Yahoo. Yeah. I'm not joking about that. I'm serious. Guys, if you're not on the Yahoo, get on the Yahoo. You know you've been in Vietnam too long when you are instantly put off when one of those girls introduces herself as being from Vietnam. <laughs> you know what's going on there. You're clued in. You're not falling for that. If you didn't get that, you will one day. After you're married. <laughs> <clears throat> you know you've been in Vietnam too. <laughs> you know you've been in Vietnam too long when you leave three seconds before every light turns green and stop three seconds uh, after every light turns red, thus creating the six-second gap of death. <laughs> that is scary. You know you've been in Vietnam too long when you have the phone number of every Filipino singer at the 17 Saloon. <laughs> By that I mean all two of them. 
which is actually more because they rotate every six hours. <laughs> you know you've been in Vietnam too long when? <laughs> you know the computer punch-in number of your favorite karaoke song, Off by Heart. <laughs> Sing in the rain, 24876, punch it in, let's go, let's do this thing. <laughs> Any karaoke singers here, by the way? <laughs> karaoke people? <laughs> yeah. You know what really freaks me out about karaoke is that one person just sort of sits in the corner, you know what I mean, and everyone else is singing their hearts out, yeah, 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 and that person just sitting shyly, and everyone's like, come on, sing, and they're like, no, 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 you guys sing, oh, I'm just gonna drink. After two or three hours, somebody manages to persuade them, come on, just give us a song, give us a song, like, okay, what song do you want to sing? Um, maybe my heart will go on. Okay, then someone starts to, someone starts to look it up in the book, and they're like, 27413. Oh. Okay, then they pick up the mic, and they sing the best damn version of that song you've ever heard, making everybody else feel like crap. I call those people sleepers. They're like karaoke sleepers. They should be punished under terrorism laws. Freaks me out. You know you've been in Vietnam too long when you start looking, this is a bit philosophical, you know you've been in Vietnam too long when you start looking at newly arrived expats with contempt and disgust. <laughs> As if the turnstile into Vietnam stopped with you, and everyone who came after was some punk kid who jumped over. <laughs> if you think about that for a while, it's very true. Idiots! <laughs> Grabbing the back of the Seom Rim, you nerd! You did that like four months ago. <laughs> you gotta put your hands on your knees. Everybody knows you gotta put your hands on your knees. It's how you balance. <laughs> You know you've been in Vietnam too long when? <laughs> for birthdays, instead of the 150,000 dong Merlot from the City Mart, you opt instead for the 30,000 dong Vang de Lat. <laughs> oh, the Vang de Lat. I think there's one bottle of Vang de Lat that's been passed around the expat community, like, like the monkey's paw in that ghost story. Like, here, take this and live in hell. It just circulates. Why? I mean, there's so many birthdays and stuff, too. Why would you even spend money? Weddings. Weddings as well. You just put, like, 20000 in an envelope and run away. No one's ever going to know. <laughs> okay. And then you put someone else's business card in. That's what I like doing. <laughs> like your boss. Uh, you know you've been in Vietnam too long when? You start writing happy faces in text messages to male friends. <laughs> do it. See you at the beer hoy. Hee hee. <laughs> yeah, little pointy eyebrows. We'll talk about sports. Giggle. We'll pick up chicks. Bracket, bracket. Uh, you know you've been in Vietnam. Oh, this is it. This is the last one and I'm done then we're moving on. And this is a little bit more quiet or kind of end on a more solemn sort of uh, reflective note. You know you've been in Vietnam too long when you see goldfish on bicycles or pink carcasses on motorbikes or donkeys walking down Hai Ba Chung or babies with nets on their heads and you think, huh. That's it for me. Coming up next is Mr. Steve. Thank you very much for being here.